So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Energy Play Shop number 29. The theme for this evening is, as you can see by the image that's in the background, is about the solar plexus. So that is actually the image of the solar plexus, which is a, um, a triangle, uh, a downward pointing triangle within a circle, and then 10 petals around it. That is one of the symbol for the solar plexus. So that's what we are clearing this episode and also next one. I think we are doing that as well. So these these two um, episodes, this one and next time we will be focusing on clearing our solar plexus. <clears throat> so as before, we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna um, open up the floor for any meditation, any um, questions. Um, whether it's about the subject this evening or any of the things that we talked about in previous episodes, and then we'll do a presence meditation, and then we'll go right into talking about the solar plexus. So, any questions so far? Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, I, you just joined. I, I was wondering if there's any any um, information that you have personally about the energy levels at the at this time, or 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 to do with you know December twenty first, or anything that you're aware of in terms of energy that is going to be affecting us. I know it's not quite related to solar plexus, but um, no, it's not quite related. But that's so yeah. <laughs> So, um, okay. The reasons why I am doing these clearings is because this time period is, um, we are actually everybody, not just me, but I'm quite sure each and every one of you are um, clearing on many levels. So I, um, so a lot of you, maybe not everybody, but um, a lot of you probably would have experienced um, different aches and pains in your body, more so than before. That's because energetically, is, is the, the energy is actually working on our body for our body to clear out the energy, any stuck mm -hmm. energies, any old energies that is no longer serving us. So that's why um, some of us may experience it as being um, aches and pains in the body. You may feel very tired or on the flip side, you may feel very energetic and you don't even feel like sleeping at all. It's like trouble sleeping. So, I, so both sides of the extremes, either you want to sleep a lot or you don't want to, you don't feel like sleeping at all. So, um, so a lot of body stuff is coming up, um, and it probably is going to go. Um, it's kind of in stages. So it's a lot of those body things is coming up for a week or two, and then stopped a little bit, and then, and then another wave. So it is really the energy that is. In, in in stages clearing the stuck energy within us. So that's why I've been doing the the, um, the root and sacral and then the solar plexus clearing in the past couple of weeks just to support our um, this process of clearing the body because yes we are we are spirit and body together. So our spirit, and our soul has actually gotten a lot of updates um, maybe in the past year um, or really in earnest the past three, four months, like for, from our, our soul's point of view, energetically, um, we, have, we have had a lot of upgrades. Now it's kind of the time for the body to catch up. So that's why the energy is now is working a lot on the body to push it or to upgrade our body so that our body and our spirit can um, come together in a more harmonious way. So that's why expect to see 
to feel a lot of things coming up in your body. Um, so that's why it's, it's really important to be very gentle with yourself, drink lots of water, and um, just if you need to, to sleep extra time, then give yourself that permission. Don't try to um, don't don't try to to or don't feel that there may be something wrong with you. Most likely not. Um, however, if if you really feel very uncomfortable, don't um, so do do try to see a doctor. But most most likely, it is just your body is just going through that motion. And so um, my understanding is that our body needed to clear these things because we, when we create, even though we create with our um, mind, but it is our body that actually needs to go and take action. So we have been, um, a lot of our bodies have been shut, shut down and so when we when the energy is right now is so strong it's working on clearing the body it's it's really hang on let me um, <laughs> try to mute everybody um so that's what's happening uh, in terms of energy what what do you expect and um, probably it, it really depends like how long is this going to last? It really depends on each person's body. Um, if you've been pretty good to your body, meaning that you you try to do um, exercise, you eat well, those things, then you may not need to suffer too many discomforts or it it is going to go through much faster so um that's what i what i can say for now thank you thanks very much okay you're welcome and i expected to um probably by about february between february and march so um like the the major wave of of um upgrading the body it would be between now and february so um after that either our body would have really progressed and been upgraded to such a way that we we can we don't we don't feel the discomfort anymore because we've done so many of the clearing. So, so it's maybe for the next uh, month or two. <laughs> it it may get it may still uh, at times get uncomfortable. So just be very good to yourself. Any other comments, questions? If not, then let's do our presence meditation then. So let's all just take a deep breath in. So slowly breathe in through your nose and allow your lungs to be fully inflated. And when you can breathe in no more, then slowly release your breath. And breathe in again slowly. And as you breathe in, just imagine that you are breathing in infinite possibilities. And when you are ready to breathe out, to start to breathe out, just imagine that you are letting go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And then breathe in again. 
breathing in infinite possibilities. And as you breathe out, let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. Let go of any stress in your body. Completely let go. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own rhythm of breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for yourself. Just do this breathing in and out a few more times and use your breath <clears throat> to allow your body to come into relaxed mode. And when you feel your body becoming more relaxed, then the next time you breathe in, as you breathe in, also call back all of your energies to yourself, all of your attention, all your focus, all your intentions. During the day, we send our attention, intention, and energies outside for our families, for our job, for our careers, for life, for whatever reasons. In this moment, call back all of your own energies, intentions, attentions. Call them all back all the way back into your body. Just allow all of you to come back and be present, be absolutely present to yourself to this moment. Think of nothing else that is before or after this moment. Just be here with yourself right now. And allow all of your energies, attention, intention to be focused within yourself here and now. And when you feel present, and when you feel that all of you are here and now with yourself, then come all the way back into the room, open your eyes. So welcome back everybody. <clears throat> Today is about the solar plexus. So I want to, first of all, just to talk a little bit about where the solar plexus is, uh, our third chakra, and also what, why, why is it called solar plexus? Because I, I always think that, okay, it's a name. I can understand why it's called the um, root chakra is called the root chakra. Very obviously in sacral or second chakra, I kind of understand why they call that. But the solar plexus is like, huh? why? Why is it named that way? I actually found out that um, plexus, the, the, the word plexus actually means that it is the, um, the coming together of a lot of um, different nerves in the nervous system. So there, there, um, there's a psoas nerves. Um, and then, so a lot of the major nerves 
within our body actually come together in a place. And when the nerves may, uh, when there is a coming together of different nerves it, within the nervous system, it's called a plexus. So that is why it's called, it's named the solar plexus. So, and the location is really in between. So it is the top of your stomach and the bottom of your um, ribs. So there, if you kind of feel where that is within your own body, it's kind of the top part of your stomach and the bottom part of your chest. If you just feel in the middle that there is a particular point that is, um, when you push in it, you would really feel that it is a sensitive area. Um, you may or may not feel any pain. I don't feel any pain in that area um, in this moment. However, sometimes when your solar plexus is either overactive or underactive, then you may you may experience some pain if you kind of press there. But but even on any good day, even when you are very balanced, that particular point within your body is um, kind of um, a soft or a vulnerable point where uh, um, a lot of the times when you when you try to um, fight with somebody, if you punch them there in the solar plexus area, no matter how big that person is, they would feel uh, like the wind has taken out, has been taken out from them. And that's because that's just the nature of that, of the, the solar plexus. And I remember when I was studying Huna in, in Hawaii, they, the, the name, they have the, a name for this part of the area. Instead of solar plexus, they call it the na'au, meaning it's the, the power center of our body. So this is actually all just to introduce that the solar plexus is actually where our, uh, also where our entity, so meaning our um, earth soul is kind of there as well. It, that is the natural home of our soul, of our earth soul, our um, cosmic soul, it, kind of communicates with us in our heart chakra and in our solar plexus our third chakra is where the the earth soul communicates with us that's the natural home there so it is it is actually about what we are doing what we can do so it's about will and it's about power and that is the um, the importance of this chakra. So it's I've talked a little bit about power. Um, I think not last week, but the the week before. So I talked a little bit about power. And when so this this week I'm going to talk more about what power is because the solar plexus is really the the power, our own power center. And so when there is any imbalances within our solar plexus, you will feel it as something to do with an um, imbalance of your internal power. And um, actually, let me share what the... Hang on, let me just shrink this down. So um, I got through this here. So because it is solar plexus is about power, so that's why the element that is most associated with this chakra is the fire element. It is a transformation. Fire is a trans um, transformation a catalyst of changing energy. So anything to do with power, will, self-control, vitality, purpose, direction in a person's life, this is all concerning the, the solar plexus. And how do you know whether you are, you have any imbalance? So 
um, if you if you have any um, issue with poor self esteem or if you feel that you are more of a timid um, person um, where, or if you feel very sluggish, um, a lot of procrastination, or if it's easy or if shame is your go-to or fear, shame or fear is your go-to emotions, then that's kind of, you know that it is, there is a deficiency in your solar plexus chakra. Whereas on the other side, if you feel like you need to win, you really like to blame other people, you are more um, aggressive person and you always needed to take action, always go, 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 and you just needed to be right all the time, then you know that that's really symptom of having excess in your solar plexus. And in terms of physical symptoms, so, so these are more mental symptoms. In terms of physical symptoms, any kind of digestive um, system disorders. So it could be diabetic, diabetes, um, any eating disorders. That's, that's all part of the solar plexus. And, and it's also to do with any adrenal issues. So if you are really feeling chronic fatigue all the time, or if you don't have a lot of energy, or if you have blood pressure issues, either high or low. So those, so these are all uh, physical symptoms of imbalances. So a few more things about the solar plexus as well. And um, just want to get back to um, doing this. So esoterically, esoterically, yes, it is about the solar plexus is about um, will, power, and all of that. But why, why is that? How come that's the way it is? It's because um, when we come here as eternal essence, when we come to earth to play. We are here to, um, in this, in this 3D, in the 3D meaning that in the physical, in the physical, we come here to experiment, to experience and experiment. What are we doing? It's, we, so our will, is really we want to come here as a creator. We want to create certain experience for ourselves. And, and once we've created that experience, we actually want to come here, experience it so that we know cause and effect. So we are here on earth to learn about cause and effect. So if you create something in a certain way with a certain um, mental, I would say, you know, thought patterns, then this is what will happen. And if we change our um, mental patterns, then something else, we will, it's a different effect. And we can't really know this unless we actually in, on a physical level, is able to experience that. So esoterically, the reason why this is about the, the solar um, plexus is about power. It's because it is here that we, the, the power, what is power? Power is really our ability, um, our energy, and also capacity and ability to shape our experience and also to shape our environment. So that's what power is. It is when, so it, we're here to learn how to use our power, how to be a responsible um, creator. So that's why uh, it is all to do with cause and effect because we, the only way we can learn to be um, a, 
responsible creator is if we can experience what causes a particular effect. So that's why we, um, the solar plexus is important because of it is how we express and use our willpower to create and also how we learn from that because we are not always going to get it right the first time maybe not even the second time maybe not even the tenth time but each time we use our willpower we exercise our willpower and also put our energy to create something and we experience the effects of our um, creative abilities then we can learn from whether um, it is good do we like it is it good for me good for everyone else as well or is there an imbalance in in the creation where it's only good for me, but it actually turns out to hurt someone else. So that's all we are here to learn. So um, esoterically, it is really, we use our willpower in order to learn how to be a responsible creator. And um, so we are, we started out as all of us, each and every one started out as omnipotent creators. We, we have, we can do anything we want. We have unlimited power. And that's not at a physical level here on, on earth, but before we come, before we come, and when we were first, when we are part of our bigger self, we are godlike. And when we come here, we we have an we come here on earth, we actually have an agenda to learn something. And because we needed to learn something or we want to find out some about something, and then we come here, we consciously limit our own power we consciously limit our own um capacity to affect and to so that we are no longer the omnipotent creators that we are when we are on the other side of the of the veil so we are actually here to to in a limited capacity. So that's why as human beings, even though we know at a, um, or at least some of us know at a um, intellectual level that we are God creators, God like creators, but we also know that we consciously um, choose to limit our own power. And last week I talked about, so how do we <clears throat> renegotiate our contract? So it is not just with in our sacral um, chakra that we, it's, it's about, because the sacral chakra is about how we share with other people. And the solar plexus is about how we use our willpower to create. It's more of at a personal power level. The first thing it, to understand is that we come with as being infinite beings and then we come into our body. And we, we actually, um, even though when we are in our body, we are limited. However, we are the only one that actually limits our own power. It's not that we, someone else is limiting us. We are actually the only one that is limiting ourselves. And so how do we get rid of those limitations? Because we, when we came here, um, how many, I don't know how many years ago, it depends on how old you are right now. 
So uh, before we, uh, I, I would say that in, um, when we came on Earth, we Earth was in a different paradigm. Now that we're having a paradigm shift, we're going through this shift. Everyone is going through this shift. And so we are moving into a different paradigm. And it is now time for us to consciously choose what it is that we want to, um, what are the limits that we've set on ourselves that we can actually now let go of? And um, what are the ones that we should still keep? So we do this, um, we do this so that the end of it, at the end of this, is that we can consciously choose what it is that we can limit we still want to limit and what it is that we no longer want to limit ourselves anymore. And this is um, some of the things that I want to explore. And I think I've explored some of them with you last time. And then this time uh, I want to throw in more food for thought is. So some of the questions that um, that actually came up was last time is, you know, how come there are some contracts I can't seem to, to renegotiate? Is you need to ask yourself, why, why do you want to renegotiate? Let's say uh, my contract with my mother. Why do I want to do that? You have to ask yourself this. Do I want to do that? Because I want it to be right, or do I want to do this because um, I feel threatened? I feel like a victim, or do I want to do this because I have a judgment against my mother? I don't think that you know she is. Um, I, I don't, maybe I don't think that she is enlightened enough for me. So that's why I want to renegotiate the contract. So why you want to? release the limits that you have put on yourself is very important um, when it comes to whether you can release the limits. If you have a charge, like when you, if you want to release one of the limits, let's say I want to be able to control other people's thoughts, that I can do that because as an uh, omnipotent being, I can control not just my own thoughts, I can control other people's thoughts as well. That is like if I have all of my power, I can totally do that. However, do I want to do that? Of course I do. Hey, who doesn't want to just with my, um, <laughs> the it's, it's like the Jedi mind trick. I mean, when I saw that, it was like, ooh, cool. I like to have that. We can have that. The thing is, you have to ask yourself this question. Um, is do you want to have that power to control other people's thoughts? Because why? You have to ask yourself why. Because you want to be right all the time or because you want to control other people because you feel fear if you're not in control so those are the questions you need to ask yourself and the um the thing is if you have no charge like if you say if your answer come back is because i feel like it i like to experience that i feel like it and if that is the case, then actually you probably would be able to do that. However, if the answer come back is, oh, because I don't want to be a victim anymore. I, I want to be able to control other people. I, I want to. So if that's your answer, then you most likely will not be able to control other people or your uh, ability to control how other people act would be very limited because you still have a charge. 
a charge, meaning that there is something that is incongruent, is um, of the negative. It's because of fear, it's because of um, immaturity that you want to do that. So if you want to explore which of your the, the the limits that you put on yourself that you can start to let go of then these are the questions you need to ask yourself any questions comments before i keep going no question okay yes yes i have one sure so when I re when I'm thinking about renegotiating renegotiating a contract, am I uh, am I am I going to be using my intention to um, to influence that contract? Is that what I'm going to to, to basically use as my as my focus? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't quite get what you're trying to ask. Your well, I, yeah, I'm a little bit confused about if I have a friend and I want to renegotiate this contract because I think it's it, it's not as respectful as it could be. And I want it to be more respectful on both sides. I want it to be a win-win. Mm -hmm. and I'm feeling it right now. Okay. So in order for me to, to I, I, I've, to me, that's my questions that I've sort of asked. And now is it me using my intention to, I want to re, I don't want to cancel this contract or walk away from it or anything like that, but I want it to have a different flavor. So I want it to be more win-win. I want it to be more respectful on both sides. And my intention is for that. Is that how I, is that how basically sort of how I'm re renegotiating? Um, yeah. And so you have to ask yourself, so how does, what, um, when you're not respected, what, what do you, how does that make you feel? What comes up for you? I want to walk away. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I think communication is not is not clear enough, particularly, and could be much much clearer and much uh, from my side. I can only speak from my side because I can't speak from the other person's side. So I I want to use intention to encourage them to be more cl clear or, or or talk more okay. about their feelings or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah. okay, just I just wasn't clear on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. Great. Um, okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, so I shall. One second. Oh, so okay. If you, if you want to negotiate, but the other person doesn't, what does that mean? Um, when you're renegotiating, okay, so um, cl clarification about renegotiation. You can only change yourself, so you can't change other people. So the renegotiation is really you yourself getting clear on um, how you approach that relationship right yeah, yeah. so your terms right? sorry you can, didn't hear that you just put your own terms right? yes you put down your yeah. terms right? yeah mm -hmm. okay. yeah so you can only change yourself so it is about um, you yourself getting clear on what is 
how you want to play that with that relationship and get to a point where you um, you are congruent. Like you really feel that, oh, okay, this is how I want to approach it. And, um, and you are okay with whatever happens. Right. So meaning, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that, okay, so you renegotiated and, you know, you don't care what the other person say, is that you have to make that change within yourself first, get clear on how you want to approach that relationship and you act according to your own, um, you act according to your own new understanding and then of course, when you change, when you shift, the other person will have to shift with you as well. So, and then, and then when they shift, then you can um, assess: is this is this new um, interaction what you prefer or not? And then you keep going from there. Right. Yeah, so it's basically our own change and acceptance. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Any other questions or comments? Okay, then let me continue on then. And um, where was I? Okay, so we are the ones that actually restricts our own power. And okay, great. So next, I actually want to. Um, so when we want to reclaim or rebalance our own power, then one of the things that we actually needed to do is because we are the one who actually limits our own power. And a lot of the times we limit our own power in very unconsciously. For example, we take on certain beliefs from our passed down to us from our parents. And we just take it on because, hey, they are our parents. We, they know better. So we just, you know, I'm just going to follow them and without asking any questions. So it's done in a very unconscious way uh, at a time when we were really young. We didn't, we, we didn't know any better because that's what's around us in our environment. So we just absorb it in and and took on those limitations. And a lot of those we actually can start to let go of and release. Um, however, because they are unconscious beliefs, so we can't really let go of anything if we are not, we don't even know that they're there. So part of the the the, the work that needs to be done to reclaim our own power to rebalance our um, solar plexus is really to flush out all those unconscious limits that we have put on ourselves. So I, next, I actually want to do an exercise with all of you that is going to help you understand or start to um, get to know some of the unconscious limits that you have put on yourself. So I, the, I'm the i gonna do part of the exercise with you and the other parts, I will uh, leave it with all of you so that you can do it as homework, okay? Because if I do all of it with you, this, this is going to be a way too long exercise, so. Um, let me just share screen so that you guys can see it.
Okay, wonderful. So this is the exercise that I want to do with you is there, I'm going to read out a list of different um, statements. So they are just one basic statement, but have um, a different spin on them. So the, the, the basic statement is, I can create positive changes in my life. And then, then, then we, and then we do that with um, different subjects, and then also put in an, the the in the negative. So what I want you to do is, I'm going to read the statements out, these statements out to you, um, slowly. And what I want you to do is actually notice what you feel and the conversations that come up in yourself when you hear these statements. So um, the conversations or the, if there's any um, incongruence or if you have any particular dialogues that goes in your head or things that you feel in your body, it's going to give you some idea whether you have any um, limiting beliefs around this. Okay, so just everybody just take in a deep breath and let it all go. And I'm going to start to slowly read the statements to you. So all you have to do is just pay attention and observe any dialogues, any particular feelings or images that comes to your mind, okay? So statement is, I can create positive changes in my life. Just feel it in your body, feel what comes up. Any emotions, dialogues, images, or a particular feeling in your body. And then the next sentence is coming. I cannot create positive changes in my life. And the next sentence is, you can create positive changes in your life. You cannot create positive changes in your life. She can create positive changes in her life. She cannot create positive changes in her life. He can create positive changes in his life. He cannot create positive changes in his life. We can create positive changes in our lives.
we cannot create positive changes in our lives. They can create positive changes in their lives. They cannot create positive changes in their lives. Okay, take a deep breath and come all the way back. Okay, so I will share a little bit about with you all um, how what I notice for myself when I go through these statements. So the first one is, I can create positive changes in my life. I was like, I was feeling not completely congruent with that. Well, yes, I kind of may be able to do some, but not, I'm not 100% certain. And then this, for the sentence, I cannot create positive changes. In my life, I was like feeling, oh my gosh, what if it were true? What a catastrophe that is. So I really feel fear when I heard that. And the next one is you can create positive changes in your life. When I heard that, I was like completely congruent. I was like, yes, I'm absolutely sure that you can create positive changes in your life. And the next one is you cannot create positive changes in your life. What I heard in my mind is, oh my gosh, how can anyone say that to someone else? That is just so absolutely irresponsible. Like the, my, <laughs> I guess my training as a, <laughs> as as a coach, is like, you never say something like that to one of your clients, not even your worst client in the world. You never say that. <laughs> so this is what got, came in my mind. And then when I said she can create positive changes in her life, I'm like, eh, okay, maybe she can, maybe she cannot. I'm not 100% sure and congruent with that. She cannot create positive changes in her life. I just felt pity. And actually, my mom just came to my mind. It was like, oh, my gosh. I, like, pity is really the, the feeling. And then he can create positive changes in his life. I won't have any problem with that. I was like, okay, I'm quite sure he can. And when I... Um, heard the statement he cannot create positive changes in his life I was like oh no slave slavery mentality that's what that's the that's what came to me and um, on that statement we can create positive changes in our lives I actually feel pretty congruent with this so yeah I feel very um, solid on this statement we cannot create positive changes. I was devastated when I um, really feel into that. And then they can create positive changes in their lives. All I can um, imagine is like all the, I would say the movie stars um the, or the um the elite people so those that's that's the image that comes to my mind and when i say um or feel into they cannot create positive changes in their lives i was like not feeling good about this so 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 some of the the, the unconscious um 
limiting beliefs that that I've adopted is really there's obviously an agenda uh, uh, agenda gender issue there so when I heard she can create I was not fully in um, in agreement with that but when I when I hear he can create oh, yeah he can sure because so so that's how I, I I know that there is um gender issues there that is uh, limiting belief and then um, I can create positive changes so I'm not 100% congruent that I can, it, but I'm absolutely sure that you can. So, so there is definitely some sort of um, a, a, a self-esteem issue there. So, so those are the things that I have um, noticed for myself. So you, you all, when you go through this, you may be. You may have some of them or none of them, or you have completely different reactions to them. Okay, so this is this is what the exercise is supposed to, to do. And the corollary to that is now that I know there is um, self-esteem issues, there's a gender um limitation there, then I will have to so so now that. I'm aware of those limitations, then it's my responsibility now, because I'm a responsible creator, to clear those, to let go of those limitations within myself. So that's what this exercise is for. Any questions, comments? When I was listening to that statement, it seems like when it was positive statement that I can uh, I can make positive changes. Okay. I feel yes, I do can I do I can do positive changes. And when it was that I cannot, I was like, you know, like all my body was shrinking and I said, not true, not true, not true. Consciously disagree. I can't do. <laughs> and um, and the same with the others. I was agree and, and then disagree. And my body, every time when it was negative sentence, it was like shrinking, like show me that it's not true. Mm -hmm. did you feel that there is a difference between um she can create positive changes and he can create positive changes in her in his life did you feel any difference between those two no i believe like everyone can do positive changes doesn't matter she okay. or he mm -hmm. Okay. Or say, uh -huh. if they okay. want to, it's all, it's all depend from your uh, desire, from your willing to do that. So, um, so what I want to suggest for you is when you hear the negative statements, you, you don't like them. So just notice what is the emotion that comes up is it fear is it what is it so just notice the emotions because it is really um because for me sometimes i feel pity sometimes i feel um judgment so so notice those nuances because that gives you an idea of the limitations that you have put on yourself because that's what this exercise is designed to do is to really let you um, be more conscious of your own in the the internal limits that you have taken on for yourself okay 
<clears throat> so now the homework, <laughs> which I'm going to do now is to, <clears throat> the homework is, so you know that it is one basic sentence and I just um, have different ways of um, putting that sentence in order to flush out more. So they're different. So I want you all for homework is to use each of these sentences below and put them through the same um, transitions, meaning let's say I am power or I am powerful, it should be, I am powerful. And so you would, so I am powerful is that I am not powerful and then feel what emotions come up for you. Or you are powerful. You are not powerful. So this is what I mean by taking each of these, these sentences and putting them through the same transitions. Do you understand what I'm what the homework is? Yep. Yep. Good. Okay, great. Because if you if you go through each of these, because each of these are selected for particular um purpose. So so all of this. So okay, so that's that's homework for you guys. And I'll send you these um different uh, I'll send you the slides so you guys can go and um, just feel what um, what emotions or what internal dialogue that comes up. Where, question, uh, question, where do you uh, send the slides, Many Sorry. Where do you send the slides? I will send the email. Yeah, we email it to you guys. Oh, okay. Okay, a question, Winnie. Yes, go ahead. Uh, what if they were reverse? We start with negative and then positive. I think that will give us more. Why? Wow, this is the exercise. I cannot say anything. But sure, you can do that. In the Absolutely. reverse form, I'll tell you how I felt it. I, my brain to accept whatever I'm hearing. And to process at the same time, has tough time. I have overload of all kinds of input. So, uh, in my case, when we make the positive statement, I feel like warm or at least mellow. When we make the negative statement, I feel cold running through my arms, my spine, my legs. Mm -hmm. That's the reaction. Mm -hmm. And the next one goes, calm down. <clears throat> now, when we get to, like when it's I, you, he, she, same reaction. When we came down to they, uh, basically, the expression of my body was, I don't care. No reaction. When mm -hmm. we came to we, the reaction was the same way as the top one, as I. Mm -hmm. The same reaction on we. And I thought that was very interesting. You know? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. anyways, I... I have to say, say hi to everybody. I'm sorry I've been for so long away. I always enjoy these sessions, but I've been way too busy these weeks or months. <laughs> and it's all for a good cause. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we will all know what's the cause I'm working on. But right now, we are not ready. I'm not ready. We will talk at some point of time that we are all waiting for. Okay. okay. Lovely to see you. But yeah. is going to happen. Welcome back. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Yes, I'm happy to see you, Olga, as, as well. Thanks, Tatiana. Thanks. Uh, how is Ottawa doing? I see you guys have two intentional communities set up already. Well, we have a number of them. We have many, many, we have so many groups, it's crazy. No, the communities that people want to go on the land and yeah, there's mm -hmm. a number of there's a number of them. There's one in around the Umpa area, Plevna Umpa. Uh -huh. There's a community there. There's one in Grace, Grace Field. Grace oh, wow. Grace Field, I guess it's Grace Field on the Quebec side that I know of, but there's there's quite a few people have just decided to yeah. sell everything and just go and grow crops, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> People. I would join if there was some young ones who tried to do the whole thing and say, well, here's your spot. Then I'll go. Other than that, <laughs> I'm past that age that I can do any of it by myself. You know, That's a big challenge. If you have no experience at all, that's a pretty big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, uh, we yeah. take it sideways. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know we 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 digress. So, but um, thank you for sharing, everybody. Um, any other anything else you want to share before we continue? Not right now. Okay, so let's continue. So, um, so after we kind of um flush out some more of the reasons why our solar plexus may be out of balance. And I am pretty, uh, I am 99% sure that all, that most of us, or at least 99% of us have imbalanced solar plexus because that's just the way it is in this society it's not easy to to be balanced um to really know own our power because um the powers to that were <laughs> the powers that were <laughs> the really in the old paradigm in the in the um duality power paradigm that's like that paradigm that we are transitioning out of, um, we all agreed to play around with power. So sometimes we will incarnate, we, we will be incarnating um, on the side of people who wants to have a lot of power and whose aim is really to get as much power for themselves as possible um, to be the, the persons that are the victimizers. And then some of us will incarnate at times to be the victims. So we have all played both sides of the, the power mm -hmm. paradigm. And so um, because we have a lot of, I would say, misunderstandings about what power actually is. It's all to set up so that we can come to this transition time to get to the point where we learn, we really start to learn to be responsible for our own power. And this is the time when we start to Gradually, maybe, or for some people, because they, they've done their work, so they may be um, more easily reclaim their own power. Um, some of the things that I, I want to talk about for power is that power is a, a circuit, just like electricity. It needs a circuit, um, meaning that it's gift and tick as well. So if you really want to, to empower yourself to balance 
your um and to get out of the 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 victim victimizer wheel is to to get very intentional about give and take i know for myself i am not good at receiving so that's why it's very easy for me to feel the um the imbalance of the solar plexus so that's why it's something that i need to i need to work on is really to um be very intentional about balancing so really a lot of work that uh, I've been doing and still has to do about being a gracious receiver so and to also watch how much power I give away to other people and how much power or how I feel about taking power for myself so that is um, one of the things that I want to mention is that power, think of power, your own power as a circuit that you always have to be mindful of balancing the giving away of power and also the receiving of power as well to make sure that there is a as much as you give away power is to also receive power. So why why do we um, give away power? Um, power, as I mentioned, is not just about, so power is also about energy as well. Is So when you give your energy out, when you work, you also need to um be mindful that what it what you get back has to be balanced with what it is that you give out. And if you don't feel that there is a balance, then you have to make that effort to create the balance somehow. And the other thing I want to talk about is it's also that um, we are here to learn. We are here on earth to learn. So one of the things that I think um, that I have a lot of trouble with is I have, I don't like to make mistakes. I am a perfectionist. So I like to think about things and, and, um, until I get really clear and really um, have it perfected in my mind before I say something or take an action. Um, <clears throat> so that can be a limiting belief as well, because will is not just about being perfect yes we want to get to be as good as we possibly can however we also need to know that as long as we're human we we're never going to be perfect that there will always be some imperfection is to understand that sometimes it is actually more important to take some action and um, look at the results and according to the results is to change how uh, and to to modify our efforts so to have it all planned out to perfection before we um, make a move is a limiting belief as well and also our relationship with being perfect um, and not liking to make mistakes is um, a limitation. I'm, of course, speaking for myself. Um, so perhaps some of you have no problem making mistakes. <clears throat> I just know that I have a problem making mistakes. 
And it actually took me a while to get comfortable with making mistakes and, and understand that each time I make a mistake, it actually is a learning opportunity for me to know what it is that I need to do differently next time so that it is um, going to create a better result. So a result need not be perfect, but it will be a better result, meaning that I enjoy the experience more than before. So these are kind of three things that I want to mention. Number one, power is um, power is a circuit. It has to be balanced. And we are here to learn. Earth is for us to learn to be a responsible creator. And that mistakes is really um, paves the way for success. Okay, that's actually all I want to talk about for this evening. Any questions or comments about those? Yeah, I was just I was just thinking about um, some of these things. Can they be also passed down from our parents too? That we've you know picked up some of their beliefs about their, their self. Yeah, absolutely. We are yeah. actually, um, this, our system actually condition us to not make mistakes. Uh, there's, yeah. There is a, there is a um, big stick or we, we are punished for making mistakes. So it's, that's why we, the not I'm not saying that we shouldn't punish mistakes. I'm just saying that there is so much um negative or or I I would say that um we don't encourage making mistakes. Actually, yeah, I, making mistakes and we don't encourage somebody saying I don't know. <laughs> That's another thing. Anybody in in you know, that I've watched over the year. Well, anybody that's in power, they'll never say they don't know, even if they absolutely don't know. And of course they can't know everything. So you know, <laughs> it's a big joke. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We, we fake it. <laughs> we are yeah. encouraged to fake it till we make it. <laughs> so, yes. So, um, we are not encouraged to be authentic, meaning that, you know, be comfortable with not knowing because sometimes we simply don't know. Yeah. But we are not um, made to feel comfortable owning up to that. Yeah. And this is all, um, I would say, different ways to chip away at how how much we own our own power. Like if we all own our own power, we should be comfortable making mistakes. We should be comfortable not knowing. When or, or even if they're not mistakes, if they're just, okay, I'm going to make this choice and this is the outcome and I'm going to make this choice and this is the outcome. Neither mm -hmm. is a mistake. They're just a different flavor of experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, you got it. Yes. It's not only our uh, parents, it's also our past life. We kept carry forward a lot of stuff. Yep. And, yeah. That is why it's so hard to break it now in this time. But we are trying to do give up all those past beliefs <laughs> and programs. <laughs> That's why we are going through the aches and pains in our body. Because <laughs> yeah. those are those are really the, the the stuck energies that needs to leave so that you know the next now that um, we we are on the I would say on the edge of creating a new world, we don't want that kind of thinking anymore. I think we have a lot of help though. 
I think we have a lot of energy help from off-worlders and guides and angels and sure. masters and all those kind of, I think we really, really, really have a lot of help right now. We absolutely have a lot of help. Yes. Oh, and I, I forgot the earth and the earth too. Yep. We so, have you know. a lot of help, mm -hmm. but we still have to allow those things to happen because it's, it's free will. If we don't allow it, then we um, it's not going to you know blow us over and but we still have to allow it. Maybe we could invite it. Can we invite help from the earth and from off worlders and from you know absolutely all our yes. guides from whoever absolutely. or yeah. God or whoever you believe in or source or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't hear Cornelius saying. Ask them for help. <laughs> they need a job. They're getting <laughs> bored. <laughs> yeah, because, um, especially the 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 um, I would say the usually the 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 positive um, beings that that is that are around us. They are the ones who um, respect our uh, respects our right. So they don't really try to step in unless we call them in and as we ask for it they're not going to say oh this this girl is going to sink if if she does <laughs> if we don't help no they don't just step in and and help they don't usually do that unless you know we ask Up to us. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, Minnie, we're this is a sidebar yep. um tuesday I don't know how your energy, but by what you feel. Uh, Cornelius was canceling his programs and next day he said that he had to help three people who were on the verge of committing suicide. Three people, two women and a man. And uh, he said that something like, if you commit suicide, you're gonna come back. Is that right? Yeah. Have you ever heard that? I didn't realize that. Um, it's like, it's like you left something unsolved, yeah, right? Unresolved. I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, it, as far as I know, like if you your soul decides whether you want to. It, it, so it it depends. I I wouldn't say that it's a hundred percent that every every person who commits suicides is going to come back because mm -hmm. they haven't come completed. I I I wouldn't agree with that because if so, what our soul um decides is it it would decide whether um to leave or to stay and make that choice. How it is going to leave, that is that really depends on um, the people that are still there. Do they need that person to commit suicide? Because committing suicide is going to trigger the people around them in different ways than if they died in a car accident. So, yeah. That's another trauma for the family and the friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it it really depends on the circumstances. That's that's what um, my belief is. Right. Thank you. Okay. Kind of didn't gel with me properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Sometimes. Because the, the soul doesn't care whether it's a suicide or get run over by a car. Death is death. And if you're going to be reborn, you will be born. <laughs> I like to negotiate that. Yeah. <laughs> and, negotiate yeah. before you come to the point of suicide, yeah. And you can. <laughs> you have the power. Yeah. My sleep, then. <laughs> 
Any other questions, comments before I go to the actual <laughs> release okay. meditation? Like now, let's go. I think so. Oh, I don't know. Okay. So in that case. <laughs>